good day. I am Julian and I am here to discuss the nursing interventions with emphasis on the pharmacotherapeutic regimen that I will use on a patient with pseudomembranous colitis with severe abdominal cramping and diarrhea. Pseudomembranous colitis or PMC is an inflammation or swelling of colon due to an overgrowth of a bacteria called Clostridium difficile. Pseudophasal bacteria lives in soil, air, water, and feces, and sometimes in foods like processed meat. You can get it when you touch a surface that has the bacteria on it and then put your hand near or in your mouth. Highly contagious and can live on environmental surfaces and are resistant to heat and alcohol-based hand sanitizers. When we take antibiotics like ampicillin or cephalosporin, increases the CD faecal bacteria in our GI tract abnormally. The common symptoms are watery diarrhea at least for 5 to 10 days, bloody stools, fever, urge to bowel movement, abdominal cramps, and positive stools. The nursing intervention that we can apply to the patient is to first we can instruct the client to increase his consumption of water to prevent dehydration due to diarrhea. Next is we can instruct him to eat several meals a day instead of few large ones for easier digestion. We should also instruct the client to stay away from fried, spicy, or fatty food because this can irritate the stomach and make the symptoms worse. To prevent recurrence of bacteria, avoid unnecessary use of antibiotics unless your doctor instructed you to. To prevent transmission of bacteria to others, hand washing is a must. First, to stop the antibiotics that may be causing the signs and symptoms of pseudomembranous colitis. So the doctor may prescribe um, antibiotics against CD faecal bacteria like metronidazole, vancomycin, and fidoxomycin. So for people with severe pseudomembranous colitis, Fecal microbial transplantation is also an option. So the two commonly used medication to treat pseudomembranous colitis is first metronidazole. Metronidazole is an antibiotic used to treat a variety of infection. It stops the growth of bacteria and parasites. So it is taken by mouth with food or a full glass of water to prevent stomach upset. Taking of this medication should be as long as your doctor instructed. Stopping the medication too early may result in return of infection. The common side effects of metronidazole are dizziness, headache, stomach upset, constipation, and loss of appetite. This medication can cause your urine to turn darker in color. This effect is harmless and will disappear when medication is stopped. Don'ts when taking metronidazole First is to avoid alcoholic beverages and products containing propylene glycol while taking this medication for at least 3 days after medicating. This medication can cause live bacterial vaccines to not work as well. Do not have immunizations or vaccinations while using this medication unless your doctor instructed you to. Next one is vancomycin. It is an antibiotic used to treat bacterial infections by stopping the growth of bacteria. It can be given by injection into a vein or it can also be given by mouth. The dosing depends on your doctor. For the side effects, if vancomycin is given through injection, it can cause pain, redness, and tenderness at the injection site. If given orally, abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting may occur.